prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. When God's servants speak forth, the wise listen. Deuteronomy 18.22 God is still saying something. During a Sunday live service, Prophet T.B. Joshua called for people to join him to pray and fast on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for a certain area in an Asian country, prophesying that he saw people in that country crying. Let us listen to his words. In Jesus' name. Amen. On Thursday, pray and find time to fast for this country. I'm seeing a country in a certain area of Asia country, but the Lord showed me the name of the country. But what is wrong there? What is happening there? Thursday, Friday. Take it to Saturday. Something has happened somewhere. Is it neighboring country to this country or this country? What has happened? Why crying? Why crying? So we come together, we pray. Hello, I'm Rosemary Church at CNN Center. We are getting word of a powerful earthquake that has hit Japan. I want to go to Kyung La now, who's standing by there with more information on this. So what are you able to tell us? Uh, well, Rosemary, I can tell you pretty much what we've experienced. I'm actually in a subway, and just a few minutes ago, we experienced uh, you know, the ap somewhere, I, I, the epicenter clearly was offshore. This is not a direct hit on the island of Honshu, which is the island that Tokyo is on. But we felt a very significant earthquake. Everything was shaking. The signs were moving. People became very alarmed. And there was a similar earthquake, but not quite as strong as this, just a couple of days ago. So um, what we see now is that the warning alerts are on. Many of the lights are off. Trains have been stopped. And people are just basically waiting here, waiting to see what's going to happen next. In Miyagi Prefecture in the north of Japan, built buildings and cars have been left submerged in the cities hit by repeated tsunamis. In Sendai City, a tsunami reached as far as 10 kilometers inland. Miyagi Prefectural Police have received a report from a shipbuilder and in Ishinomaki City that a ship with about 100 people on board has been swept away. More than 20,000 households have been ordered to evacuate in the prefecture. In Kasanuma City, several hundred people have been evacuated to a local school. One third of the school's gym is submerged, and people are staying on the third floor of the school building. Police say an unknown number of people are missing in many cities, where tsunami waves up to seven meters tall swept through low-lying coastal areas. Sendai Airport is also submerged, as you can see right now on the screen. People are stranded on the rooftops of buildings and runways are closed. The airport is located one kilometer from the coast. Simply 
hard to believe uh, what uh, these towns, what these people ha have been through. Uh, and as I said, uh, the system right now I is overwhelmed. There's a shortage of food. There's a shortage of water in a lot of the hardest hit areas. It is a very difficult situation for many of the survivors who are in shelters right now, very crowded shelters. Uh, and, and, and as I said, uh, there's a lot of people I in need uh, at this hour. We're going to talk about that all in the hour ahead. Uh, the death toll now has risen to uh, some 3,600 people. More than 7,000 are still missing. Uh, exact numbers uh, of fatalities, of course, at this point uh, are, are not known. I just want to give you kind of a, a sense of the time timeline you know I know you've heard a lot of different stuff from these from these various reactors over the last five days of this disaster I just want to look back at the last five days and kind of bring us up to speed uh, on where we are right now Let's take a look at 2:46 p.m. the massive 9.0 earthquake strikes off Japan's coastline unleashing a tsunami that swallowed everything in its path Japan's 17 nuclear power plants automatically shut down. Standard procedure following an earthquake. Multiple generators kick in to keep the reactors cool and safe, or at least that is what's supposed to occur. Nearly eight hours after the quake, reports that the cooling system at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, located near the, one of the hardest hit areas, is not working. Those living within a mile and a half the plant are ordered to evacuate. 2 a.m. Saturday morning, radiation levels in the plant are said to be rising. By sunrise Saturday morning, there's confirmation the tsunami wiped out the plant's generators, causing cooling systems to fail. A nuclear emergency is declared. Later that afternoon, hydrogen buildup within Reactor 1 sparks an explosion that causes the roof to collapse and injures four workers. With safety concerns escalating, the evacuation zone is extended to roughly 12 and a half miles. We evacuated immediately after the explosion. We were scared then. All the people in my community fled away. Meanwhile, workers scramble to cool the reactor using seawater in a last-ditch effort to prevent a meltdown. Sunday morning, Tokyo Electric Power Company, the owner of the Fukushima Daiichi plant, says integrity of the containment vessel of Reactor 1 has not been compromised. Yet three people test positive for radiation exposure in the region around the plant. Monday afternoon, a second explosion. Reactor 3's roof and walls give way, injuring six people. But once again, officials say no significant radiation was leaked. In towns nearby, fear takes hold. I'm due to give birth soon. I want to know exactly what's going on at the nuclear plant. I'm scared. I'm scared because I can see the radiation. Monday night, more bad news. Reactor 2's cooling system has also failed. With just a few dozen workers remaining, they resort to seawater yet again. On Tuesday, the crisis continues to escalate when an explosion ignites a fire in Reactor 2, raising concerns of a partial meltdown. Then a fire breaks out in Reactor 4's cooling pond, which stores spent fuel rods outside the reactor. The result, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency, the emission of dangerously high levels of radiation in the air, 167 times higher than the yearly dose for one person. Here we have Prime Minister now to come. Officials assure the public that the levels quickly dropped, and the Prime Minister asked for people to remain calm, but admits a very high risk okay. remains. In an attempt to minimize risk, the United States Navy repositions ships offshore, and Japanese officials issue a no-fly zone around the plant. But there appears to be no relief in sight. By sunrise Wednesday, another fire breaks out, and there were malfunctions with the cooling systems of two other reactors. started with a historic tremor. Oh my God. Scenes that we've been showing you in Japan are unbelievable. The doors of the school are completely blown off. This is your house. A number of people have tested positive for coming into contact with radiation. There are so many victims in this tsunami. <laughs> it's not known how many people lost their lives here. The power of the tsunami, it just speaks for itself. Connect across continents. Impact your world. Go beyond borders.